Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got a great conversation for you today. With much of the world standing on the brink of mainstream 5G usage, operators are looking for ways to extract maximum value from their network investments, essentially trying to figure out how to monetize 5G. Operators have spent the past few years on things like Spectrum, the increased base stations needed for sufficient coverage and capacity, and new software tools that allow for autonomous networks and faster delivery of services and upgrades. So how can providers take advantage of the high speed, low latency, and connectivity capacities that 5G brings to the market? Today, we're going to talk with C. Joe Matthew Verghese, a MBA summer intern with Samsung Networks, who has been studying the issue of 5G monetization for several months. Today, we'll discuss the challenges and potential the industry is faced with monetizing 5G. Welcome, C. Joe. Thank you so much, Keely. Such a pleasure to be here. So can you tell our listeners more about why the industry is grappling with how to monetize 5G? Sure. I think uh, it's a good question. Um, there is a lot of baggage that we carry from 4G that we really need to sort of undo and look at things differently with 5G. Uh, we did see that 4G gave rise to the birth of the app economy and SaaS companies sort of went on to make billions of dollars. Uh, but the MNOs did not really earn revenues generated by the app economy, despite sort of riding on their network. So that's, I think, primarily where the industry needs to look at things differently to monetize 5G. You know, sort of referencing Arthur's analysis, right? We see that MNOs go through different stages in their 5G monetization journey. We see that we have the innovator player where the 5G, where the MNOs sort of leverage 5G branding to sort of position themselves as innovators, you know, enable early adopters, attract 4G customers to 5G. And slowly as the market sort of evolves, MNOs sort of move to the competitive play where uh, they try to bring 5G to the masses, capture the volume, you know, introduce. Uh, unlimited plans, uh, just like what we saw Geo did in India, where they introduced a uh, free 4G uh, for six months, and that way they were able to sort of gain a large market share. And then as the market sort of evolves uh, and 5G enters its maturity stage, MNO sort of moved towards a commodity play. This is where I believe we are at, somewhere in between a competitive play and a commodity play. So as 5G sl slowly sort of evolves to its maturity stage, uh, MNOs really need to introduce use case-based services, packages, and pricing. Um, monetize innovative 5G add-ons, sell experiences, AR, VR, cloud gaming, target specific customers. So I think leveraging use case based service packages in applications and monetizing innovative 5G add-ons is definitely the way to effectively monetize 5G. So you already mentioned a couple of these in your previous response, but from your research, what did we learn from 4G and how should those you know, learnings be applied to 5G? I mean, what we realized is despite riding on their networks, right? The MNOs did not earn revenues generated by the SaaS or the app economy. So a great thing about 5G is, say, pay-per-use 5G dynamic charging will really enable MNOs to maximize revenue, you know, allows for real-time offer creation and dynamic pricing. So that's something that MNOs really need to look into. Uh, in 4G, we also saw that there was no real service level differentiation capabilities. Uh, it was obviously a very hyper competitive market. It led to a one size fits all approach and introduction of unlimited plans. Uh, but with 5G, there is hyper personalization with differentiated services and use case based packages, which is something MNOs must really consider. And lastly, we did see that MNOs did not really upsell traditional portfolios like the voice and the text and the data. Uh, they merely acted as service providers. But with 5G, MNOs should really focus on being more than just providers, but be enablers through partnership-led model, be a network wholesaler and sell experiences through partnerships. I think that's the way forward. So what are some of the easy ways that operators can monetize 5G today? Uh, I think uh, fixed wireless access uh, is something the industry is already moving towards. So that's a great sort of starting point. Um, network slicing can definitely be a very profitable solution. You know, identifying applications and services that offer guaranteed guaranteed quality of service to end customers is a promising proposition. I know we've identified a couple of such solutions with my project and, you know, Samsung's end-to-end -end network slicing capabilities that includes their orchestration platform, the slice management system, the RIC solutions can really sort of fulfill some of the requirements to make that happen. I think also 5G private network solutions for enterprises is definitely a way to go. 
you know, when we did a cost benefit analysis, we realized that a great tipping point to consider is if you're an enterprise that needs coverage, say, for more than 250 or 250,000 odd square feet size with, say, 1,500 odd connected devices, sensors, IoTs, a 5G private network solution proves to be a way more promising and scalable solution as opposed to, say, even the latest in Wi-Fi technology or Wi-Fi 6. And that's primarily because enterprises look at three important differentiators. One is, say, security. As we know, a 5G private network solution operates in a license spectrum, offers more control over the network and data. Mobility and reliability is a big concern as well. With 5G private network solution, it supports a massive range of distributed systems and applications, offers way more mobility. And what's most important for enterprises is more than low latency, they're really looking for stable latency. And that's something a 5G private network solution can offer as opposed to say, uh, Wi-Fi. And lastly, resilience, right? Offering, say, advanced QoS capabilities, the ability to dedicate different slices for different applications that sort of ensures reliable, predictable performance for critical applications is extremely critical for private network solutions for enterprises. So I think fixed wireless access, network slicing solutions, and 5G private network solutions is sort of the key ways to sort of how operators can really effectively monetize 5G today. So we just talked about all the benefits with enterprise, right? So I think it's very clear why an enterprise would invest and pay for some more customized service, right? But what about the consumer perspective? Do you really think that they're, as a consumer, willing to pay more for having customized services? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, from the research I've done, we found that customers are willing to pay at least 15% more for guaranteed service. You know, so if MNOs can really look at introducing guaranteed network performance based plans, it will potentially increase their ARPU by two to four percent. You know, through dynamic pricing and charging and real time offer creation can lead to impulse purchases that can potentially increase ARPU by one to two percent. Uh, we've seen a lot of surveys and studies that say that overall there is a positive or neutral feeling about operators offering different speeds to mobile users with different needs. And I think if it is customers right and targeted to the specific segments, customers will be willing to pay more for customized services. So now let's, you know, 5G has been a global global conversation. Um, and so everybody's been interested about 5G around the world. But I imagine some operators in other countries are already starting to monetize 5G, right? So how are those operators looking at monetizing 5G in other countries? Are they using different strategies, you know, and how would those be applied um, or different to what we're doing here in the US. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. Uh, we see that a lot of players have entered the commodity play stage, like I mentioned earlier, as the 5G market sort of matures. We see primarily South Korean operators are leveraging use case based service packages using innovative 5G add ons to effectively monetize 5G and obviously gain that competitive advantage. You know, players like LG U Plus and SKT are offering VR headsets in 360 degree media service and 4K UHD videos. In Australia, Telstra offering gaming mounts and devices along with some of the other plans. So it's clear that the market is shifting towards that. Uh, with respect to the US operators, we know that some of the US operators introduced a premium pricing strategy, but quickly sort of had to recall some of their offers because it didn't really work well with the consumers. And from our 4G learnings, we know that parity pricing strategy will not really be the way forward as well. So I think a bundling pricing strategy, you know, leveraging use case based services, I believe would be the way forward. And it's clear that the market is shifting towards that and U.S. operators really need to focus uh, towards that shift. What do operators need to do today so that they can, you know, take advantage of 5G monetization? I mean, uh, just from a pure consumer standpoint, right? There is a clear opportunity for MNOs to increase their ARPU by offering users dynamic control of their quality of experience, you know, leveraging existing 5G infrastructure. So apart from your big sort of 5G SA investments, some of the things that they really need to do is upgrade their existing OSS BSS capabilities, their billing system changes and implementation, some of their device level API to really sort of adapt and enable effective monetization strategies that 5G is going to bring about. That's great, CJ. Thank you so much for your your time today. Thank you so much, Kaylee. The GSMA estimates that 5G will improve the global economy by more than 900 billion in 2030, showing us that the market is there for operators to increase their 5G revenues throughout the decade. Ultimately, the quest to monetize 5G holds immense potential, ushering in a new wave of innovation that, when embraced, can unlock substantial additional revenue streams for operators willing to embrace the new digital frontier. We are all looking forward to see the new fascinating services that operators will develop to maximize their 5G revenues. And to our audience, 
Thank you for participating in today's podcast, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech Talk.